Another year, another Riot Fest lineup has been released and the internet is in an outrage. Or at least some of the internet is upset with the lineup. Spoiler alert, I think the lineup is pretty awesome. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. You know, if you don't know what Riot Fest is, a Riot Fest is probably the biggest punk rock festival definitely happening, you know, today. I know Warp Tour, um, a lot of people don't like Warp Tour. It does have its place in punk rock history. Um, and I know that it's not, you know, a full summer tour now and it's kind of sporadic dates. I think it's what, four or five um, going on now. But uh, Riot Fest is definitely up there. This is the 15th anniversary of Riot Fest. So everyone uh, is expecting or was expecting Riot Fest you know, to throw out the red carpet and book every single band that's ever existed. Uh, that did not happen, um, but the lineup, in my opinion, is still pretty awesome, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. I got the lineup right here on uh, my laptop, so that's why I'm going to be uh, looking down here. And right off the bat, we know Blink-182 couldn't perform last year, so they are performing uh, this year. And um, no matter what you think about the brand new Blink-182 single, Blame It on My Youth, I believe, is the uh, full title for that. Uh, not a fan. I know a lot of people compare that song to like an Imagine Dragons type song or the like the new Fall Out Boy and new Panic at the Disco. But man, even Phoenix and A High Hope are jams in my opinion. Uh, Blame It On My Youth just doesn't. Uh, it seems like that song in particular doesn't know whether it wants to be the Blink-182 that was on California or the new poppy versions of like Panic at the Disco and Fall Out Boy. So the song is kind of neither of them. That is uh, yard work happening in the background. Hopefully it's not picked up too much on the camera. Um, but that's what's going on with uh, Blink here. And I liked California, the Blink-182, uh, Blink-182's last album, but this new single is just not for me. Nonetheless, I'm very excited for Blink-182 to be playing, you know, I think Blink-182's, uh, every single one of their albums has, you know, some great songs on it. Personally, I think Wendy Clear is the best Blink-182 song ever, hands down, damn it, right behind it. Uh, so, uh, let me know in the comments if you guys agree, disagree. Uh, what do we have? We have Slayer, uh, Bikini Kill playing is awesome, obviously. You know, I've never seen Bikini uh, Kill uh, play live, so them reuniting and playing, you know, this huge, big festival. I think that's really awesome for them and really awesome for fans of, you know, every single age group, you know, to either now start Googling Bikini Kill, being like, you know, what is this, you know, band Bikini Kill, what does that even mean? You know, if you know nothing about Bikini Kill, I think you at least see that name, give them a Google, um, definitely check them out. Bikini Kill is, you know, one of the historic punk rock bands for sure. I know there's that, uh, a great documentary about uh, the lead singer, the title, is, isn't it Rebel Girl? I believe it's Rebel Girl. I'll probably put a link down in the description um, somewhere. Um, and that was a great documentary as well. Rise Against playing, you know, this is the 15th anniversary. This is a Chicago festival. It does make all the sense in the world for Riot, uh, Rise Against to play. Um, the last few albums for Rise Against personally, and I think of what I've seen, you know, talking to people and an online haven't, uh, you know, had the best reception. I think Wolves was the last one. And, you know, Morning in America was okay. Politics of Love was an okay song, but honestly, I literally couldn't name you any other songs on that album. Um, Violence? Is there a song called Violence? I believe there is. I promise you I'm not looking. Uh, this is the, the Riot Fest Twitter um, here. Uh, I think the Violence is a song on that al uh, album, but nonetheless, Rise Against, I mean, I've talked about Riot Fest here, uh, Rise Against, excuse me, on the channel before, and, you know, they're a band that is so entrenched in, in my own punk rock history as a, as a listener, uh, you know, listening to Rise Against when you're younger, back when they were, when Q101 was a thing, you know, they played Rise Against to death, um, but, you know, better than listening to Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit every 10 minutes, which still happens on every alternative station here in Chicago. Going down the lineup, we have Jawbreaker, which is crazy that Jawbreaker, they are in the second line here, but I mean, just, you know, uh, was it last year where Jawbreaker reuniting was like now a thing, and I see them using Instagram all the time now. Uh, it's just funny to see Jawbreaker, obviously, Ween, Diane Wood is going to be very interesting uh, to see. You have Taking Back Sunday, who is playing uh, Louder Now, and Tell All Your Friends, so that's going to be, you know, a pop punk uh, a pit for sure. That's going to be fun. Uh, Descendants, again, B-52's uh, Dashboard Confessional playing. Uh, they're playing uh, the places you have come to fear uh, the most. That's going to be fun. You have Neck Deep, The Starting Line, Streetlight Manifesto, which I believe is a criminally underrated band, which you might be saying, you know, hey, we're talking about punk rock and ska and Streetlight Manifesto is, you know, one of the 
best in that genre, but I think it was last year or the year before where they were playing one of the side stages of Riot Fest, the one by, it's, I can't remember the name, it's, it, as I'm going to thinking of how to describe it, it is going to be funny, but the one that was mostly on grass, kind of in the side there, had the most shade, and, you know, they played an awesome set, and everyone was having a great time, but you'd think Streetlight would be on uh, such a, a bigger stage, but nonetheless, Streetlight's playing, so hopefully they get their, um, their rightful due. Here uh, you have Against Me playing, and they are playing two albums, I believe, in full: Reinventing and uh, Transgender Dysphoria Blues. And that's crazy that like I don't know all of the albums here, but I know Transgender Dysphoria Blues was a few years ago. It wasn't that long ago, and there are that album you know has impacted so many people, and they're going to be playing that full. Uh, that's very cool to see. And obviously, you don't play an album in full unless you imagine that people want to hear that album in full. So that is very cool. Can't wait. Uh, to see that. What else we have here? American football. Uh, you know, we've talked about emo a ton on this channel. You all know my thoughts about American football. Uh, it's going to be great to see all the all the moshing and everybody sweating, especially if it's like 90 degrees and then everyone kind of just standing, looking off into the distance, thinking about their, uh, their ex-boyfriends and girlfriends and partners while American football plays in the background. Honestly, if it was, you know, raining and, you know, 50, 60 degrees, that's probably your perfect peak American football, uh, fall uh, weather, but no one likes standing in the rain, so I may have just jinxed us all. Some of the younger bands here that I'm very, you know, excited about, you have uh, Hot Mulligan, I would say Turnstile as well, Can't Swim, Microwave, Pew Pew Pew, Sincere Engineer, Elder Brother, Thin Lips, uh, Kelly Massey, you have all these, uh, I would say, maybe not younger bands as an age, but not as popular as, for example, you know, Bikini Killer Rise Against obviously. So that's nice. I would have liked to see maybe even some bands that I think next year are going to be huge as far as Riot Fest is concerned. A few of the bands that I think that Riot Fest could have booked this year so they were more ahead of the curve than that I think for sure are going to be booked next year are Future Teens. I think Future Teens is the next huge band in the pop punk emo scene. Uh, we have a review on this channel of their uh, album Hard Feelings. It's way too short. I should have went way more in depth on it, but you can go check that video out. I have so much to say about that album. The way that they completely capture dating and relationships in 2019 or 2018 whenever that album was released uh, is just perfect. A lot of bands, you know, will try to dance around, you know, sliding in the DMs and all that fun stuff, but Future Teens just get it. The songs are catchy. They're they're just great. Go check out that review. Go check out that album. Uh, I think they should have been booked here. I think they're going to be huge. They have a new album coming out this year, uh, and the Second band is Mannequin Pussy. Uh, their two songs from their new album, Drunk 2 and Who Are You, are great. Uh, listening to Who Are You made me instantly pre-order their brand new album. I think that album is going to be, you know, super rare and ver very valuable at some point. Not saying that I'm going to sell it, but it's going to be one of those prints that's going to be very hard to find because so many people are going to pre-order uh, this record, in my opinion, or, or get the few that are end up in record stores. Uh, I would definitely check out Mannequin Pussy and Future Teens. I think those two bands are going to take over the scene in the years to come. As far as big omissions from the lineup, I've seen a lot of people online talk about Operation Ivy. Uh, speaking of albums that you want to hear played in full, Operation Ivy, come on. Uh, My Chemical Romance was a rumor for a while. I do think MCR will come back at some point. You know, nostalgia is literally at an all-time high. Just look at pop culture and all the things that are, you know, exploding, all the shows that are coming back, all these bands that are, you know, reuniting, going on tours. Nostalgia is at an all-time high, and whether... I'm not saying that My Chemical Romance is coming just for a money grab. They probably would have done that if that was the case already. Um, but I do think My Chemical Romance will come back at some point. But clearly, now is not the time. So I saw those two. The really couple other big omissions, you know, Green Day has never played Riot Fest. Um, speaking of full albums, they have, you know, a huge catalog of albums that they can play in full. Uh, even uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers or the Foo Fighters. Speaking of rock slash punk bands that have never played. Those are, I think, the big three. I'm not really missing anybody uh, off the top of my head. Uh, you'd expect one of those three. Maybe Bryfest did reach out. This is the 15th anniversary, um, but those three are the big ones. Green Day, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Foo Fighters. We always talk about them, you know, as when the Riot Fest lineup, you know, hasn't been announced yet, but in the weeks coming to it. And I think those three bands are the big three omissions. Operation Ivy would have been great too, um, but it didn't happen, so it didn't happen. 
Overall, I think the lineup is great. I will definitely be attending this year. Maybe there isn't one band in particular that was going to, you know, shock the world and everybody would have came out and been like, wow, this is great. I honestly think out of all the bands that I just named, probably My Chemical Romance would have been the one that people would have been like, wow, Rifus really outdid themselves. You know, Operation Ivy would have been cool, but, you know, would anyone under... 25 really care you know I, I'm 25 so I'm right in that demographic and you know I have a lot of friends who are into punk and, and emo and hardcore and metal and all that stuff and you know they don't really listen to Operation Ivy a lot of the older punks I'm for sure would care I would care too I love Operation Ivy don't get me wrong Operation Ivy and Slapstick are probably the two best ska albums of all time but would people really care if we're looking at it objectively Green Day, I think, would have been close up there. Green Day, you know, has taken a break. I know Green, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong is uh, playing a lot of shows with his band Longshot now. Maybe Longshot plays an after show. That would be kind of cool. But then again, after a long day of Riot Fest, I could just see a lot of people screaming for Green Day songs and <laughs> pissing Billy Joe off. Uh, Red Hot and Foo Fighters uh, would have been cool. But Foo Fighters play Wrigley uh, enough in Chicago if you want to see them. And um, Red Hot Chili Peppers do as well. I feel like they've played Wrigley not too far ago, uh, not too long ago, excuse me. Um, yeah, so my guess would be My Chemical Romance would be the only one because you would get, you know, a lot of the, the crowd now that's like myself, you know, they're, they're in their 20s that grew up with My Chemical Romance and a lot of, I've seen a lot of young bands, you know, checking out emo, you know, even behind the scenes here when I put emo or emo tags in my video, uh, those do really well. Emo is like the cool word now in pop punk, which is funny because, you know, five, ten years ago, no one wanted to be called pop punk or emo, so it's funny how uh, times and marketing changes, uh, but I feel like a lot of young fans now are looking at My Chemical Romance and looking at the the performance and and the, the more theatrical aspect that My Chemical Romance put on, you know, especially in their My Black Parade days, and they're like, wow, you know, this is awesome, and the songs are catchy, and the songs are great, so I feel like My Chemical Romance was the only band that Riot Fest could have gotten to reunite, and people would have been like, Phew. Wow, you know, this is crazy. You know, hats off to Riot Fest. Um, but besides that, I don't really know what band Riot Fest could have got to, to really bring everyone together and be like, wow, this is hands down the best lineup of all time. Those are my thoughts on the 2019 Riot Fest lineup. Let me know what you think about the lineup and if you will be attending in the comments down below. Please like and share the video. Subscribe if you haven't. And as always, thanks for watching.